Welcome to the Dane's Fishing Studio. And we're back here, but this time I'm with Slava and Marshana, the four times U.S. Smooth Champion. And I still can't get over this. They have never lost a dance during the four year while they were champions. Is that correct? That's correct. Wow, that's unbelievable. But anyway, um, I want to ask some questions get to know you better. What inspired you to start dancing, Manshana? Uh, well, I, I was born in a dance family. My, all, uh, my mom and her three sisters used to dance and they all danced with her partners and husbands later. So I kind of grew up in a dance family, but as a kid I was very shy and I didn't want to dance at all because it required to dance with a boy. So my mom signed me up for ballet, jazz, everything else. In the ballet they told me there was no hope for me because I didn't have a turnout. <laughs> I can go do something else, so I shouldn't dance. And uh, so I kind of was going to my mom classes back and forward. Then when I was 15, I met this boy who was very handsome and he asked me, would you like to dance with me? And I was like, yay, <laughs> I want to dance. So that's when I started. Uh, he danced maybe for nine months and he stopped, he got bored. Then I got another partner and then I met Swavak and I was like, whoa, who is this boy who practices eight hours a day by himself and I really would like to dance with him. And somehow it happened, he moved to my city and we start dancing and then that's 22 years later right now. Wow, that's awesome. One lesson learned is that never take one person's opinion as 100%. Everybody has an opinion. There's two sides to everything. And if you're determined and you want something, you can listen but move on and live your dream. Yeah. Slavik went for the same story. I actually have a very similar beginning. The difference was I, don't, I don't, do not come from the dancing family. My, my parents never danced. But uh, it was similar. One of the pretty girls asked me to dance and I was 17 back then. I used to play basketball. So when I, when I started, uh, my first teacher said to me, you know what, you're too old, play, go back, play basketball. You're never gonna be good at this. So, you know, he, he actually, pushed me to try harder to prove him wrong. And four years later, my first partner stopped dancing and sometime later I actually met Marzena. And what's funny actually, a couple of years later, uh, we were invited by the same coach to dance show on, his, on, on the competition he organized back in Poland. And at that time we were already US and world champions. And it was interesting how the, you know, the life you know, drew the circle back to the place where, you know, he said, we, we won't be able, I won't be able to dance well, but look, you actually invited me to, as a world champion to dance on your competition. So that was interesting. See, there you go. That's another yeah, so guys, story. Never quit. Yeah. If someone tells you you cannot do it, if you really want it and you put your heart to it, you can yeah. achieve any goals. Both of us, we were told there was no hope for us. Yeah. And, and I think part of it, it, and I think part of it, because we we weren't kids when we started. I think we were a little older. But I was 15. I was 17. But I think the the part, the, the fact that we were older actually also helped us to to kind of set up the dreams very clearly that we knew what we wanted and. Therefore, we work very hard. You know, sometimes when a kid starts very early, they don't have this, this sort of drive yet. Well, also, I feel that you can never judge someone when they're 10, 12, 14, 15. Right. Right. I see it not just in dancing and sports. Right. Someone can be great at 14, by 18, guess what? Right. They get they're not nice. even, not bored, but even their talent yeah. only taking them so far. Yeah, right. Someone yeah. 14, working yes. the butt off, not getting anywhere by 18, boom, they right. shoot up. Okay, moving yeah. on to smooth. How has it changed in the last 10 years? Briefly tell how it's gotten to today, oh, wow. which okay. is fabulous. Mm -hmm. I love the style. And if I was to come back dancing, I would be the new American style champion. See? You can still do it, right? <laughs> Over 60. But anyway, we how has it changed? Oh my gosh. When we first came to America, it was 2002. We came to Emerald Ball, first competition. That was the first That was the very first competition that yes. we got to see in America. And actually danced. On we it. danced yes. at that one in mm -hmm. Ballroom Only. Uh, we uh, so smooth and it was like, oh my gosh, what is this thing when people are still waving their arms? And we had no idea. I said they they trying to then stand and they just cannot stay together. <laughs> that was my oh, first impression. Oh, but look, yeah, and see again. 
20 years later or whatever, you know, I, I end up dancing this style and, and really loving it. So it's just... Yeah, but you know. it was interesting. We didn't understand. Then when the more we saw the competitions, we first fell in love with Viennese walls because right. it was so much more expressive than international Viennese walls. And it was kind of funny because we start teaching when we start working for our second studio that invited us. We start teaching more smooth than anything else. And we were like, okay, we got to start learning this style because everything what we were teaching was based on the kind of feeling, but not really learning from the champions. And that's when we were a kind of approached by two coaches to tell us, guys, you have to compete in smooth because we see what you do with your students. We really need you to. And we're like, ah, after the baby. And then when I got pregnant, Tony came to me. She goes, you're mine for the next year. And uh, she, basically, that's how our career started. And we are so grateful that she took us because after doing tendons for so many years, I think smooth is the best style ever. It has so much to offer and it allows everybody to be so unique. And when you look at today's final, every couple has a totally different approach to the smooth and they look amazing. And then it just a matter on a judging panel that night on the, their performance that night, who can win because the battle is really close. Right. These days. right. So uh, yeah, it, and it has changed dramatically. And that's Tony Redpath, in case yes. you don't know. She was also with Mike Gomez, the four, four times, times U.S. Right. champions. Yes. Right. So she was the one that kind of digged us in. She, we made her promise on our wedding reception that we will do it after the baby. So when but she we saw me, wow, but we sort of hoping she's not gonna remember that because we said there's no way we're gonna be dancing after, after baby. having a baby. Yes. Yeah. So I didn't realize you didn't. Start this till after you had the yes. baby. Yes, yes. So our that's son, even more yes. amazing. Yes, our that son, is, our son was born wow. in September, and then in January after we started working on our choreographies, mm. and and then July we we, we competed did our first for the first competition. Time. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm now I'm blowing away. <laughs> Never lost a dance and did it after you have a baby. Yeah, it was challenging. Okay. It was really, we had to do a lot of logistic. Get the parents from parents Poland. Parents were super helpful. And yeah. the parents were the biggest help. And, do, and those of you who complain you don't have much, have <laughs> enough time in the day, well, guess what? That's out the window. Yeah, we had three hours a day to practice together while he was in the preschool, yeah. and we had to organize the practice from start to finish, make sure everything was covered, and then whoever finished the last uh, in teaching, that person would stay and practice solo. Yeah. So we tried to do it, and then when the parents were here, we would practice twice a day to kind of uh, go make sure that after yeah. teaching Pro-Am, we would go back and just dance as we do competitions. We used to do a lot of Pro-Am while competing smooth. Good. Moving on, you judging, you doing Pro-Am dancing with students. Let's talk about the judging. Mm -hmm. What are you tired of seeing when you judge? What am I tired of right. seeing? Right. These are all... I don't want to see this. I'm tired actually, of watching this. The, the most tired thing that I see is that people uh, try to move up to the next level so quickly. They don't put enough effort into learning the foundation. And the biggest thing for me is that when you, when you compare dancing to school, we spend at least five years in elementary school in America, right? Then we have that middle school. So it's kind of like eight years of being in a like a ground zero. That's our bronze. And I feel like we should put more time into dedication to learning the proper technique. Because without that foundation, we can't be very expressive and balanced in an open division. And students very often, they see all this flashy stuff and they right. think this is what's the best. No, the beauty, it's, in, it's actually fortunately in the foundation because that's when you can become expressive and that's when you can become better. And that's when your dance vision has so much to offer because they can learn all this foundation that will make them more balanced, more stable. So that's the one thing that I wish people put right. more time Repetition. into, yes, right. into and focus practice on it. the basics and the foundation. That's in anything. Yeah. Right? It's this day, Does, it doesn't every, matter what you're fast. doing, karate, yeah. sports yeah. is the foundation. You work yeah. on it every day. Yeah. And even with yoga, I'm yes. practicing the foundation. Okay. Um, when you go to Poland, when you land in Poland, what is the first thing you want to do? I know you have to go see your parents, but is there something you say, I have to go get? What do you... Oh, well, the food. <laughs> the food. Yeah, the food yeah. is great. Yeah, there's, although it's, it's more and more things we can find here, but it's still, you know, Marjana's mom, she, she made delicious. Uh, uh, she bakes a bakes. lot. It's, like every year she makes stuff. a competition with herself how many more 
uh, cakes, pastries, cakes okay. she can make. Okay. Yeah, so it's very hard to stay on diet there. <laughs> That's one thing. <laughs> but and then Slavic mom loves cooking. So we go and she just does every day. She just basically spends entire day in the kitchen preparing. Whoa. And especially things. the Christmas yeah. time is that where we yeah. we that. Yeah. cook a lot. Christmas is very special in Poland because we celebrate three days. It's not like we have one day and people here shop, shop, shop. Right. And then it's over. It's a family time. It's a very family. And then we actually look forward to be together in the house. I actually don't don't like to get out too much like we go for our walks because we live by national forest so it's very nice area when we can walk but I actually like to be with them so it doesn't matter what we do it's like we actually spend time together as a quality family just to basically time. slow down great just to slow that's down. okay my last question they are the organizers of the dance fish in Las Vegas dance camp this is going into your 2019 refresh my memory yes. Your third year, third or year. Year. your yes. third year, okay? In 2019, what can we expect? Well, we have, uh, we, the first year you were still with us, you were helping us and guiding us, then you cut umbilical cord. <laughs> 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 and we're on our own, so we've learned a lot. What we, uh, we changed a couple teachers on the classes to kind of meet uh, expectations of the, the crowd, students, yeah. of the students. So we, what we did, we put a little bit more technical classes to make sure people can find the foundations of the, of the dancing. Uh, on top of that, we do a lot of like, we added the social party, which is a great, people love this, that we have an additional night and it's a social party right. in the evening when it's they amazing. all can they get still together. have so much energy yeah, to dance. Yeah, after dancing right. 12 hours, hours a day, yeah. they actually do the social party in the evening, besides right. the after hours. And they all get together, we provide snacks and drinks, Ice and it's really fun. And, and they all get together, so it's like friendships. Mm. And then we do It's the, like a reunion. Yes. Right. They and meet. they just love it. And then we do, we did it actually already. Uh, the year before we did the ice cream social which was right. a big hit people loved it that suddenly on the end of the last class they all got together and they served so, ice cream they can put all so the this year they already knew it's coming yeah, so the, you could it, see that the there was a that's right. Right. So that's, yeah. yeah but like the new things it's like definitely we have a uh, couple new teachers Dana and Yuki are joining us this year which we're very excited Go she ahead. is a very good friend of mine and we know each she other did. there we know their ethic because we had them in the studio right. for the camps and they are the new up Coming couple who is the American right rhythm, American the professional rhythm. American rhythm. Yes. We're so, gonna have a Jonathan as a guest Jonathan judge. And Jonathan Roberts I mean, is teacher. our guest Jonathan teacher. Jonathan Roberts, yes. yes, he's coming as a guest teacher this For year. One day, one day. So yeah. that's a that's a new thing we started from last year. Last year we had Tony and Michael as a guest teacher for one day. This year we have Jonathan Roberts coming as a guest teacher, and people love it because they can learn from people that very often they don't have time to coach and they don't like to travel too much to coach like Tony and Michael right. and they get the opportunity to learn from those people so uh, it's kind of fun so we love to, to, to bring students and teachers together yeah. that's, that's sort of our that's purpose what that's we what do we love at the camp. Yes. and we added as well the, the professional smooth camp the competitor smooth camp right. on Sunday that's the new thing so yes. that's the new thing we started last year kind of it was a little bit more like let's see if that will work and people loved it so it's mainly for competitors it's on Sunday they can come only for this if people don't want to stay for entire week which we hope they will but if there is someone who's competing and they want to learn all the secrets you know we did with right. we're doing this with Eddie Simon and JT and it was really fun it was just like uh, four session uh, with them four session with us and they get additional day on Sunday Good. for competitors so there you have it getting to know Slava and Marshana a little better we're gonna have a episode number two sometime coming up in January. Thank you for joining us here at Dance Vision Studio. Bye for now. Thank you guys Thank so you. much for having us. Thank, Thank you, you, Wayne.